So we're just going to take a brief moment to speak about a concept. So I've done a lot of speaking and uh, demonstrating in and around the concept of assessment, uh, as well as the concept of multisensory integration. So assessment, having your general concepts that macro identifies micro, preferably patient active before patient passive, and have an organized or uh, a structured algorithm, so a clear-cut algorithm. Uh, I've spoken about multisensory integration, so the concept of keep your, your hands and your eyes on the prize. Now, I haven't necessarily spoken specifically about assessing soft tissue. I've mentioned it somewhat in passing, in somewhat a sideways fashion. I've spoken about the concept that often in classical osteopathic uh, literature and as far as what we can identify as a way that older osteopaths used to work with soft tissue is they tended to work with, with perpendicular, work perpendicular to fiber direction for soft tissues. <clears throat> now, what I will say is, I just want to try to synthesize those in some way so it's somewhat more understandable as to how you may approach assessing soft tissues. So when you're assessing soft tissues, it's actually somewhat difficult to use multisensory integration because the soft tissue that you're assessing, so if we, if we say we're looking in the region of the patient's hamstring uh, as a general group, like the, the three muscles here, if I was to push down, right, looking at it, I won't necessarily pick up what I'm trying to pick up because my hand is going to obscure it. So I've spoken about, even with patient positioning, the, the anatomy should be preferably visible. So what you're working on should preferably be visible. But in the case of assessing soft tissue, when you're just doing kind of short lever or push into it, you're not necessarily going to be able to see because what you're going to see is essentially tissue squishing. So you won't necessarily be able to see the difference that you can feel. So when assessing soft tissues, especially when you're just essentially testing soft tissue yield in a short lever fashion, just directly on it, you're more likely to not be able to use your vision effectively. What you're more likely to be able to do is, again, it should be a clear algorithm. So in this case, what I would do is I would start high on the hamstring, use a broad hand, so broad contact for multipoint discrimination, and I'd lean in. Now, I do prefer to look because it helps me kind of remember where I am and how far to move. Because if I do this and I do this, I'm missing a large chunk, right? Of, of the anatomy I'm trying to interact with. So I can lean in, I can check, and as far as yield is concerned, right about here is where I found the greatest resistance to motion, the motion that I'm imparting. So again, when I'm just pushing straight into the soft tissue, what I'm looking for, the, the dom dominant concept that I'm trying to use is broad contact for multipoint discrimination. Uh, relational motion is at play, but broad contact for multipoint discrimination. I'm pushing in, pushing in, and at any point in my hand that I feel the resistance, I can pay attention. Now my eyes help me not necessarily identify it, but identify where I felt that, so I can go back and recheck. So as I push in, as I push in, I'm trying to make sure that I haven't missed any of, of the broad range. So macro identifies micro. So a broad or a big scan to identify that this is probably the area that I'm most interested in. Now, <clears throat> with respect to the concept of working perpendicular to soft tissue direction, as far as that's concerned, that can be an assessment as well. So if I take the hamstring as a general mass and I recognize that the fiber direction is more or less vertical, what I can do in here, right now remember that you can see me shaking the whole patient, so that's not necessarily going to give me what I want. So I'll stabilize a little bit lower and I'll broadly grab through, through the hamstring mass and I'll push it away and I'll bring it towards. And same thing applies. I have a clear cut algorithm, so I start at the top and I come down I use my eyes to make sure that I'm not missing things, that I'm understanding where I am, and I come down, right? Now, in general, hamstring, this is where multisensory integration becomes more important for myself because when I'm working perpendicular soft tissue direction, there's more visible motion that occurs. So when I can see it, I can understand it better. I can understand where I am, and I can also have not just the palpatory feedback, the haptic feedback, but I can also have the visual, visual feedback, which is essentially multisensory integration. So as I do that, generally the, the hamstring as a mass, as a general mass, prefers to go away from me, so towards midline. <clears throat> and in and around the same region, as what I found with just soft tissue yield, just short, short lever pushing into the tissue, is more or less very similar area to where I feel a, a challenge with motion of soft tissue in relation to bone in the hamstring here. So what we're looking at, if we're just pushing in, multisensory integration doesn't work as well, but your eyes will allow you to remember where you were. 
It's the haptic feedback that allows you to tell a little bit better when you're just pushing. Right? So that's where broad contact for multipoint discrimination becomes more important because in your hand, especially in the palm of your hand and in your fingers, you're a little bit more sensitive. Two-point discrimination is more accurate. So that's why you use that. That's why I'll use that as the concept that I'll describe a little bit better. When we work as far as the assessment of soft tissue, perpendicular soft tissue direction, then multi-sensor integration, the ability to look becomes a little bit more important because I can see the travel of the tissue because I'm moving in relation to a stabilized bone, right? So I stabilize the bone by holding on to uh, essentially the, the limb, the lower limb, the leg below the knee, so that I don't end up shaking my patient all over the table. So I stabilize them, and I can then better just move that tissue. So when we're going perpendicular to soft tissue direction, we're still using multisensory integration as our dominant form of identifying motion uh, motion freedom and motion loss or motion dysfunction when we're just pushing into soft tissues and I can do the same thing more or less in the calf right when we're doing that because our hand is blocking us it's more so broad contact for multipoint discrimination but our eyes will tell us where we were when we found it so we can go back so hopefully that helps to be a little bit more explicit with respect to taking a look at assessing soft tissues